Dear Edit, has anyone you've known simply disappeared? Under what circumstances? Was there ever any closure? My mom's boyfriend. He said that his mother was sick in another state and he was going to visit her. After a few days without hearing from him, my mom got worried and called his mother. She wasn't sick and had no idea that he was supposed to be there with her. We found all of his possessions, including his computer and camera and other valuables as well as seemingly his entire wardrobe, everything, in a rarely used coat closet in our house. Police called my mom to say that they found his empty car somewhere in the forest near the Kentucky-Tennessee border. We live in Florida. But they called from a blocked number and when she tried to find information about the case later on from other sources, nobody had anything on file about the car. Either really creepy vanishing story, or horrible way to break up with someone after winning the jackpot on a scratch off. My aunt was missing for a very long time in Virginia. I want to say several years. No one knew anything or heard from her, but her car was found on the side of a road near the woods. Keys still in the ignition and doors unlocked. They found some of her remains a couple of years ago in those woods and my dad was absolutely torn up. No idea of who or how or why. The way your story started, I thought it would be a happy tale of reuniting. I'm sorry for your loss. My father is convinced one of his co-workers just walked away on 9-11. The guy had a lot of financial problems, marital issues and my dad is positive the man was walking down the street in front of him when the first plane hit. My dad was late for work. They has a memorial service but as far as my dad knows, this guy's remains were never found. An old neighborhood friend of mine was living down in New Orleans with his girlfriend at the time. He had plans to go meet up with some buddies in Houston to see a football game. But first he wanted to take a bit of a road trip to go sightseeing in a small town on the border of Texas and Mexico. He never showed up in Houston. His family and girlfriend, quite obviously, flew into a panic and had the police on the job. The best they could do after a week of searching was find a picture that may have been his car. But they were really not much help. Considering he was visiting the border of Mexico, there was a good chance he was down there, which is not an easy place to find a person. I come from a strong neighborhood community so there was a lot of support for the family coming from all directions. It's never easy losing a child and the police claimed they had done all they could and that they'll keep an eye out. Three weeks without a trace, he called. He was in a hospital 1000 miles away in Mexico from where had been sightseeing. His hands were cut up. His face was bruised and it took him days to remember his own phone number. He had nothing on him but the clothes on his back. As far as he could tell, he had been mugged and probably left for dead in a ditch somewhere. He has a spattering of memories of being on a bus, and then being on the side of a highway and random places like that. His family flew down there and got him back home. I'm grateful he made it out in one piece and for all the people that must have helped him on his way. There's no way he could have lasted 3 weeks south of the border in a state of delirium without help. A friend of mine from college has been lost at sea since late June. They're assuming it sank during a storm but nothing has been found. Had a client at my law office whose middle aged adult son disappeared without a trace about 10 years ago. Nothing suspicious whatsoever, all of his belongings were still in his house, even his shoes. No signs of struggle, no known involvement with any criminal element, no known people who had a grudge against him or would do him harm. He wasn't drunk, wasn't using drugs, wasn't mentally ill, nothing. Local police searched the woods near his house with officers and dogs, dredged the local river, Tried to trace his bank and credit accounts. Absolutely nothing came up. Very awkward moment. We needed to get his permission to sell a piece of property he had partially inherited. Had to get his mother to sign a sworn affidavit saying that he had been gone so long without a trace that she presumed him to be dead. I was casually seeing this girl a few years ago. We were more friendly acquaintances than anything else. She was fun and interesting and we'd always have a great time when we got together. She didn't really have much to say about her past. All I really knew was that she'd spent a few years living in Saudi Arabia. She was a white American. The one day, just, poof, 
There was no responses to any of my attempts to get in touch with her, and I didn't hear anything from her at all. It was weird, but at the same time, we weren't at all serious, so I figured she found something more interesting. I ran into a mutual friend of ours a couple months after that, and when I asked how she was doing, he told me he had no idea because he hadn't seen her, either. He was closer to her than I was, however, and he filled me in that she had been married to a Saudi, and the guy was very abusive and treated her like a prisoner. The abuse escalated when they moved to Saudi Arabia. When they came back to the States, she took the opportunity to run away from him, and she had had to change her name and basically hide because she was so afraid of her husband. Our mutual friend was under the impression that she took off again because her husband found out where she was. I do hope that's the case. I don't like to think about the alternative. Friend's dad went missing almost 15 years ago in the middle of a nasty divorce. No warning. Just took the dog and his truck. No paper trail. It's assumed he either killed himself somewhere or started a new life far away. If he took the dog, I doubt he killed himself. I was at a concert one night in Sydney, Australia, and I got into a fight with this British backpacker. He was fricked off his head on drugs, and the only reason why I didn't get kicked out is because the girls who he was inappropriately groping convinced the bouncers that I was only trying to stick up for them. Anyway, he vanished, and I was under police investigation because I was the last person to see him alive. I knew I hadn't done anything, but it's still pretty creepy to be told not to leave town until we get to the bottom of this. He showed up two weeks later floating in the harbor. He'd apparently had a massive blunt force fracture in his skull and fell into Sydney Harbour and drowned. His death was reported as accidental, but having your face on TV and hearing police are wanting to speak with this man is a little scary. My cousin did, but it's not particularly mysterious. He dropped out of college, moved in with his girlfriend, and just spent the days getting drunk. He stopped showing up at family gatherings, stopped returning phone calls to my uncle and disappeared. He moved to a different state, we last heard he might be in Minnesota. My uncle keeps trying to get a hold of him, but to no avail. I feel bad for your uncle, this makes me upset. I stayed at my grandparents house during the summer. They had a friend who played the guitar with my grandfather, they had met at a festival and had the same music taste. Anyhow, when I was at the airport heading back to my home country I saw the guy. He said hey, take care man, keep practicing the guitar and tell your grandfather to do the same, I will be back. Been for years, no trace, he didn't even have luggage. Stuff like this just depresses me, man. Just, ugh. When I was very young, 3-4, my best friend at playgroup was the son of a distant family friend. We were boyfriend and girlfriend, at some stage he just disappeared, and I forgot about him, passing him off as something my childish mind had made up. Then in high school I notice one of the office ladies says hi to me when I walk past in an almost over friendly way. I didn't think much of it because she was just really nice to everyone. You couldn't not like her. Two years out of high school, me 20, I'm talking with my mum and sisters about school and I say how nice the office lady was. Mum says yeah she was. I can't remember the boy's name. Josh's mum. I'm like who? And she explains that we were best friends in playgroup. Suddenly I realize I hadn't made him up. My mum tells me that he got leukemia and died. And that apparently he was asking for me in hospital but they never took me so I wouldn't get upset. I broke down and cried because it was so overwhelming. I get teary every time I think about him. It was so long ago and I'd forgotten till then. TL. DR. Imaginary friend wasn't imaginary. Go back and acknowledge his mom as somebody who's more than just an office lady to you now. She'll be happy you did. I know a girl whose father disappeared. It's believed that his co-workers killed him and buried him in a construction site after he threatened to expose their corruption. But nothing was ever found other than his car, which had been wiped clean. Nobody could ever prove that they killed him. Moral of story don't threaten to expose corruption. Just do it. Preferably anonymously. This happened in my town. I didn't know the people personally. An elderly couple 50s or 60s went missing. Just neither of them showed up to work one day. No clues no goodbyes nothing. 
It was all over the news for months until slowly they started to fade from memory. About a year later I found out what happened. There was a serial killer that had been working all over the country. He always went for the same thing. An elderly couple living in a house or condo with an attached garage. No dogs or kids. He would break in through the garage and kidnap the couple. This particular couple he drove to an abandoned house where he raped and killed and dismembered them. He left the bodies in the house wrapped up in garbage bags. It turns out the house was scheduled to be demolished and their bodies ended up in the rubble and eventually the town dump. They only found this out because they caught him in another state and he confessed to all his crimes and then killed himself in prison. When I was 15 my brother, 8 years older than me, went missing. He had been overseas for a couple of years traveling and seeing the world. He discovered a love of sailing after a trip to Antarctica on a schooner and found a job sailing transporting rich people's boats from the US down to the Caribbean. He and the others he sailed with made it down there and there was a party aboard another vessel. When it was finished my brother, who was probably pretty wasted at the time, rowed another guy back to the guy's boat and then was supposed to row himself back to his own boat. He never made it. After dropping the other guy to his boat he was never seen again. The dinghy was never found. And neither was he. That's as much information as I have. I don't even know for sure which island it happened on. Maybe Saint. But? Saint Thomas? I was 15 and no one really talked to me about it. After I well I guess I just didn't ask because it would upset them. The whole family felt messed up to me. My mum was devastated. My dad went super religious and my other eldest brother, 10 years older than me, left NZ to go and live in England. Even now, 25 years later it still feels like a big hole, not knowing. Part of me likes to pretend he's still on an amazing adventure. I don't like to think of the alternatives. Part of me likes to pretend he's still on an amazing adventure. 2. Godspeed, Sailor. I can contribute 1. I don't know why I was so excited. It was awful. I lived in a yum cooperative house one summer in the 70s. I called upstairs to Bev that dinner was almost ready and to come down. She said, okay. Just a minute and I went back to cooking. 20 minutes later we are wondering where she was and Diane went up to get her. Bev's room was empty and the large window that opened like a door was wide open leading to the fire escape. Her keys and purse were still on her desk. Her typewriter was there with half finished homework in it. I've never seen her since. It was terrifying this was shortly after John Norman Collins. The Michigan murderer had been put in prison and it was very fresh in people's minds. The next year, they found a body in the arboretum. But it wasn't her. I think about her every once in a while and her picture is vivid in my mind's eye. My father suffered from PTSD, manic depression and other conditions attributed to the Vietnam War. He would have episodes where he would just take off. It usually ended with him calling a week after he went missing. Scared, confused and lost. This happened about about 4 times when I was young that I remember. The last time he disappeared I was 15. It was the 16th of December 1996. We finally got the call the 7th of January 1997 that they found his body in a campground 3 hours away. To this day the holiday season is the worst time of year for me. My friend done up and disappeared Memorial Day weekend of 2011. No note, no closure. He was the type to wander off, sometimes, a real hippie. They ended up finding his body about 3 months later, less than 500 feet from his house. He hung himself in the forest. I miss him a lot. Check my link history for the articles. Alright, I never thought I'd stick something personal on Reddit, but heck. My twin brother went missing 10 years ago. We were both 19 at the time. He had always been a good kid, nothing going on, but he was studying to work in government but are not sure which branch he was with interning. He called me and my mother one night, telling us how much he loved us, and how he'd try to get back to us as soon as possible. Wanted us to take care of his puppy, not sure when he'd return, etc, etc. Didn't sound scared, sounded a bit excited, nervous, oddly prepped with his words, despite our prodding. We haven't seen him since, and it breaks my heart every day. My mother has been a wreck ever since, but we tell ourselves he's out doing something important. We have convinced ourselves that if he died, we'd probably know, but I dunno. I am still waiting for the moment he shows up at my door. 
safe and sound with awesome spy government adventure stories. That's the hope. I miss you, Bree. I hope you get to see him again, and in plenty of time to enjoy life together. I had a friend in middle school who I was really close with. Then one day, her phone was shut off and she had moved and I have absolutely no clue where she is to this day. She literally disappeared without a trace that I could find. I hope nothing bad happened to her. I wasn't a fan of her mother's boyfriend. Just out of school, I had a friend who was heavily into machine intelligence and object recognition and digital images just vanish when he started looking for work. He was doing amazing stuff with desktop scanners and off the shelf PC hardware almost two decades ago. So I have no doubt that he got scooped up by some intelligence agency or research firm. And that he now has a higher security clearance than Obama. This is spooky and interesting. When I was in 8th grade, 5 years ago, my uncle disappeared. He was a drug dealer. So the elephant in the room when my family found out was that he was obviously dead. I'm pretty sure he's dead. We all think he is dead. No closure. He's dead. Well two years ago, in 8th grade, a girl moved to my town with her dad and stepmom. Me and my group of friends immediately took her in. She was funny and nice. So why not? Within a few months she changed her name. And we began to realize her home life was a bit off. She couldn't go over to friends houses or school dances and no one was allowed at her house. She wasn't allowed a Facebook, Tumblr, whatever and she couldn't give out her number. She mentioned leaving her mom's house several years before and she wasn't allowed to contact her or her siblings. Sounds a bit suspicious, right? I thought so too and I told me dad about it just in a passing. He mentioned it sure as heck sounded like she had been kidnapped. Near the end of the year I mentioned it to her, phrased it as a joke, to see her reaction. She missed graduation, and I haven't seen or talked to her since. No teachers or friends have a clue. My dad was in the navy as a teenager, I think he was 17 at the time, anyway it was pretty young. His best friend on board had his birthday and the older crew got him real drunk. Once he'd had enough, he got up to go to his bunk. No one ever saw him again. It's assumed he fell overboard. Apparently this sort of crap happens all the time on board warships. Pretty crap way to go if you ask me. My wife's nephew disappeared. He was gone for 2 months. Turned up dead in a creek. That was 14 years ago. They just arrested 2 guys for the murder about 3 months ago. Guy I know from my local gun club was D. He was undercover with a drug running group. Not sure which one, but they found him out and him and his family had to go into witness protection. He told us that much, and that's it. Haven't seen him in over a year. I would think that if they're going into witness protection they wouldn't be able to tell anyone. They'd just go. That's just a guess though. A family friend's sister was a well-known reporter. She was investigating corruption in politicians with linkages to certain gangs and brothels. She disappeared for 30 odd years where she was found addicted to H900 km away living on the streets. Claimed her family's lives were threatened. Yeah. My aunt has been missing for about 4 years. She went to Mexico with this guy she had been dating not too long. She never came back. Her brother went down to confront the man and saw that he had a wife and kids. The man said she took off and he hasn't seen her since. This all broke my grandmother's heart. I feel so bad for my cousins. I'm scared that she might have gotten picked up by criminals or cartels or something. I hope she is still alive and comes home. We don't really know what else we can do to find her down there. They asked my uncles for DNA because they had found the body of a woman but it turned out not to be her. Was at a local college where there was a plaque for a girl who was last seen there. She was just walking to her dorm van. Poof she was abducted. That thought is just terrifying. One of my second cousins. Schizophrenic who turned 18 and was able to check herself out of mental institution. She's somewhere in the eastern block and is likely dead at this point. Or alive. We really don't know. I can guarantee she is either dead or alive. This thread is full of creepy. On a lighter note, I went to science camp when I was in 6th grade and never saw those people again. They're probably doing okay. It's 2.30am and I'm sitting here wondering why I'm reading this thread and getting completely creeped out. 
I'll never forget. It was Thanksgiving 2011 in the US. I was just finishing my food when my dad told me your uncle is missing. My uncle isn't someone I really knew well. Just someone I would see whenever I visited family in the Philippines. He was married to my mom's sister and they had two kids that were 14 and 16 at the time. I honestly didn't know how to feel. We were celebrating Thanksgiving with my dad's side of the family so it was easy to just talk with my other cousins and really just forget about the situation. Apparently he had already been missing for a week. The next day we got horrible news from our family in the Philippines. They found his body. He had been brutally murdered. Limbs cut off and his throat slit. They also suspected he was hung until he bled out a significant amount of blood. I remember two things. Being shocked and my family drinking and crying around our dining room table that night. A few details and rumors started around his murder. The first was that he was involved in a dong fighting ring and he had recently fired someone who helped care for his roosters, but would bet against them because he really knew how healthy capable they were. The second was that he had a mistress from a wealthy family in that the family found out, and decided to get him for it. The last was just a random act of violence by a local terrorist group gang. There have been no arrests made, not even charges. It's been over a year. According to my family, the police force in the Philippines is very corrupt so it would take a long time to really get anything solved with any murder cases. Even though I barely knew him, I'm still angry. And if anything, it really opened my eyes to how poorly the Philippine police force operates. Apparently evidence was misplaced and some witnesses essentially confessed to being paid not to speak, but the police did nothing. Pretty fricked up overall. My great grandfather. He was a typewriter salesman in Saint Louis. When my grandmother was 8 years old, he told my great grandmother he was going to meet an old friend and left. When he didn't come back the next day she called the police. They found his car on the bridge with his typewriters out and around his trunk which was opened. They searched the nearby area and the river and never found him. My grandmother always swore that he was still alive somewhere. Didn't know her personally but I lived in Bloomington when Lauren Spiro went missing. I searched for her a few times and her parents frequented a restaurant I worked at. It was eerie knowing that behind the bar I had been at the night before she went missing. My sister used to babysit our Italian neighbor's daughters sometimes when she was maybe 12. It was always during the day and just for a short time when their mother had to go shopping or get her hair cut. One day the mother who hardly spoke our language said she had to buy some groceries and left my sister with the two girls. She didn't come back. Her wallet was found somewhere the near store she usually went to, which was close to a little forest. Of course everybody was expecting the worst. Well, turns out she went back to Italy, without telling anyone and leaving her two daughters alone with my 12 year old sister. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.